Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and triangles of all ages, and welcome to another video. Now, in this one, you've already seen the title, and yes, it may seem like clickbait, but uh, let's be real, I don't do clickbait on this channel. I mean, okay, I gotta do some of it for the YouTube algorithm to get people to like, share, and subscribe, and all that kind of stuff, but no. This is actually real, and we're gonna talk about it, and it's about Kohog, who you can already see on your screen, who is the most broken character in all of Triangle Strategy. Now, as usual, I like to talk about things, and then I actually like to show you how to do it. So I'm first off gonna go over Kohog's skills, and then I'm gonna go over his weapon tree, and how I think you should build him, and what sort of the best things to put on him are. And then I'll show you why, which is the demonstration. So if you only want to see the why, you can skip to the timestamps, or if you only want to see the weapon tree, all that jazz is in the description or in your little chapter thing on the bottom sidebar scrolly thing that you can click through and skip through. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about him. So you can see here I've got him level 50 because he's incredibly, use incredibly useful, and you can see his level 50 stats. None of these actually matter. I almost never, or not almost never, pretty much never attacked anyone with Kohog ever. So his strength, his magic attack, doesn't even matter. His physical defense is really, really, really low, so you don't really want him in range of anything. But his magic defense is pretty good, so he can tank a couple mages if you need to, that's fine. Accuracy doesn't matter. His speed actually matters. His base speed at level 50 is 25. I think that's also what he starts with. For some reason, speed doesn't level up as you grow in level in this game. The reason it shows as 31 here is on his weapon tree, which I'll show you in a little bit, it goes up by up to 6. You can increase his base speed by up to 6, and this is huge with how Kohog plays, or it's not huge at all with how I play him. So, you know, grain of salt, depending on what you want to do with him. His evasion is okay, but he's really not going to be dodging anything, and you shouldn't be depending on him to dodge anything. He is incredibly frail when it comes to physical damage, like we just talked about, and so... Most of the time, you do not want to be up in the front lines, but I'll show you how to use him in a way where he probably won't take damage or he won't have the opportunity to take damage. Anyways, he's got three jump and he gets this naturally. He starts at two and then you can upgrade it by one. And he has six movement, which is actually a base of four. He gets another one movement, I think, through his weapon tree, and I have a movement bangle on him here, which brings him up to six. Now, this is hugely important with the way I'm going to play him, and I'll talk about it in a little bit once I go through the abilities. So the abilities, time compression raises the speed of an ally within range for three turns. I never use this, but, but this is basically haste. All right, it might be a little bit better version of haste. I'm not exactly sure how much it does. But again, this isn't geared on exactly breaking down all of his skills. This is just showing you why he's the most broken, and I'm going to go through them very quickly. Turn back time is an amazing skill that you can use in a pinch if you screw up, and it basically just rewinds a unit's position, HP, and status changes to their states from the caster's previous turns. One note is that it does not recover any of their TP. It literally just brings them back to where they were and their HP and their statuses beforehand. There's actually really only one skill that I use. In due course, I don't use this just does damage to the enemy's turn whenever their turn comes around. It does do a decent amount of damage because his magic attack is pretty high. But again, I don't use this. Warped space is really, really good. It is literally just warp. You take an ally and you move them to anywhere within five, five squares of where they are. This is great for certain maps, like if you're on New Game Plus, for example, Chapter 5, where Roland has to make it to the end of the map very quickly, you can use Warp to bring him sort of over the barricades before he moves his turn so that he can immediately keep moving very quickly down that area. Just general things like that. Warp Space is a really good skill that you actually might find yourself using. I have used this a few times. Stop Time is really, really good if you're in a pinch on a map that has Eliminate Allies. So it basically just pauses everyone and everything for two turns. And then, yeah, with this, Turn Back Time works because it brings back another unit to be able to move with Kohog. The problem is, is that it's 3 TP, and deservedly so. It's pretty busted. Distorted Space. This is the penultimate Kohog move that allows you to cheese pretty much half the game. And this is what I'm going to show you in a second. You get to swap positions of Kohog and any other unit on the map, including enemies, NPCs, you name it. It just picks him and anyone within six range and swaps their positions. The reason this is so busted is any map with defeat boss, and I haven't gone back and counted them, but there are a, a fair few if you, if you take the right routes and pick the right decisions, especially the final maps in the entire game. 
You can literally just one turn these by distorted spacing a boss in the middle of all your units and then just surround them and follow up spam them, which is exactly what I'm going to demonstrate in a second. Re Remain and Recover I think is his third promotion tier skill, so you don't even need his third promotion to actually use him well. And then you've got Reverse Space Time, which is basically Divine Pulse and it hits a reverse on everything, including TP. It costs four TP, but it doesn't bring anyone back from the dead. So if you kill a bunch of enemies during a turn and then you hit this, you will gain all the, po the positives of it, which is bringing back your units and replenishing all their TP and all that kind of stuff, without any of the negatives of having to deal with more enemies. So this is an incredibly useful skill if you're going to play more honest. I'm not an honest person. I'm a villain. Look at my profile picture. So I never used this. I just did distorted space. Now I'm just going to really quickly point out Kohog's weapon tree. This, not very good. None of these, very good. You, you literally do not need any of this stuff because he's, he shouldn't be on the front lines at all. So you shouldn't need evasion, you shouldn't need that physical defense, you shouldn't need that HP, and he shouldn't really be attacking, at least not how I play him. If there's a different play style that I need to be made aware of, feel free to let me know. The speed is nice, so if you need to grab anything from these first two upgrades, and if you're only upgrading speed, it's gonna be cheap here and cheap here, so why not? What gets really expensive is his rank three upgrades. So that's where I would leave speed probably until the end, but the first two I would get are the movement plus one and the jump plus one. Again, if you are going to use the distorted space method, method that I'm about to show you right now, these are the most important thing. You don't even need reverse space time and you don't even need the speed. Because if you saw, I have him equipped with the movement bangle that stacks more movement, as well as the vanguard scarf that guarantees he moves first anyways, so he doesn't actually need the speed. That's literally all I have to say about Kohog. Now, let me show you why he's so busted in practice on these defeat boss maps. So I went ahead and got set up. As you can see, this is chapter three, the Hyzant chapter, if you choose to go that route. This is New Game Plus Plus. I've made sure not to put any super spoiler units on the map. There's like, it's just, you know, some of the starting ones you get and Archibald, because Archibald's awesome. And this map is the first defeat boss map in the game. As you can see, it's Plinius over here. And he's a mage, he's not very tanky. But what's interesting is he goes fifth, right? So we've got Anna and Roland and actually I can press Y. There we go. So we've got Anna, Roland, and Kohog because he has the Vanguard Scarf can go before him. And let me actually just start this map. So you can see right here, my Kohog immediately starts. Now, what do you want to do in these maps? You can see that he moves fifth, right? And so what I want to do is I want to bring him into my army and trap the guy so that he can't move. And the way I'm going to do this is you can see there's a tile here with a height of 9. It's an obstruction, so he can't move. And there's a height of 10 here. It's pavement, so he's not going to be able to jump up from the 5. So what I really want to do is I want to put him on this tile right here and surround him with Serenoa and Roland, who will do a lot of damage to him. Now, the only problem is Serenoa moves 8th, and this is where you combine it with two very early quietuses that you get. So I'm just going to start demonstrating. I'm going to use Kohog, and I'm going to go Distorted Space. And since it goes six spaces, this is the exact range of where I can swap Plinius onto. And we're just gonna do this. You now he's gonna have a little conversation with Corentin, which is nice. Anna doesn't really need to do anything here, but if I were moving my units normally, actually, no, I lied. She does need to do something here. We're gonna talk about the quietuses. So I have all of them in the game here. And some of my favorites are Missed Opportunity, you can use this if a boss is really quick and is going to move right after Kohog. Just stop the boss with this. Keep him in one place until your units can surround him. And that way you can also make sure that the boss doesn't hurt your units, do any funky, fancy AoEs or anything like that. That's amazing. In tandem is also something that you can use to bring someone's turn up, like a Serenoa, who I want to help to surround, or whoever your highest DPS unit is at that point in time who you want to use to surround the boss. Defeat is not so I bring Serano over here and we're just going to Hawk Dive because that is his highest damaging option. And you can see we're just shredding him here. And then Roland goes next. And Roland has a nice skill called Pushback where he can just shove Plinius right into the object over there. And I just realized this is on very easy difficulty. Uh, this works on hard. It'll just take longer than a single turn. So my apologies, my apologies for showing you the very easy level of damage. I was surprised there for a second. I was like, why is this doing so much damage? But 
on something like a hard mode, he wouldn't die, but he'll basically be surrounded, so he can't move and you're just free to bully him for as long as you need to, and you've effectively removes, removed the strongest component on this map. And there you go, that's the end of the map. And that is why Kohog is so good, and he doesn't need anything, because he lets you switcheroo the boss, or any archer, any mage, any troublesome unit that you can imagine on this map, or on any map, you can get rid of them. And if you're worried about Kohog being left to dry there, you can also just light wave him out. Again, it's another, all three quietuses that I talked about, light wave, the stop one, and in tandem, these are things you can buy at the very start of the game, even on normal new game. Now this guy is probably a new game plus unit, but he basically gets rid of any level of difficulty in new game plus. So if you're struggling, there you go. That's how I beat most of the game without any support units whatsoever. I had a team that was just Kohog and DPS units and I blitzed the game. I think I finished that playthrough in like 10 hours or something like that. I wasn't reading much of the story because I'd already read it, but that's it for this video. I don't want to go on for too long, but I hope that shows you why Kohog is so broken. And if you want any semblance of challenge in New Game Plus, you should not use him. That's all I'm going to recommend. My favorite playthrough was my second one on New Game Plus. I didn't use Kohog, and I used a bunch of random units that I hadn't used in my first one, and it was so much fun because I did it on hard, and the difficulty was a lot harder, and it really made me experiment with things and think about different ways to use the units. So yeah, that's about it. I will see you all in another video, and maybe a stream very soon. Peace.